Oh, Father, we come to this time to celebrate communion, to celebrate the Lord's table, to celebrate and proclaim what Christ did on the cross and his death. Truly, he did pay it all. And we are blood-washed sinners that are made white as snow. Thank you for that. Thank you for the gospel. Thank you that we do get to celebrate this time of communion. And Jesus, it is always in your great name we pray. Amen. As we're going to be spending time in God's word, we want to ensure that everyone has a copy of God's word in front of them. So if you don't have a copy of God's word, please go ahead and just raise your hand and the the men will gladly distribute a copy of that for you. And as they're distributing it, I'd like you to open your Bibles to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. We're going to be in verses 6 through 9. Romans 5, 6 through 9. So this is the time in our service where we take a little cracker and a, and a little cup of juice. And we remember the body with that cracker. And we remember the blood, Christ's blood, with that little, piece of, that little cup of juice. And, we do, and as we do this, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This morning, I have a question for you. Who do you think are some of the worst humans in history? Who are the most terrible tyrants or despots that you can think of? Perhaps some of the names that come to mind are Antiochus Epiphanes, as we've been learning about on Sunday nights as Smed has gone through the book of Daniel. Or more modern day tyrants, perhaps Hitler, Stalin. They all murdered and killed men, women, and children in terrible, horrible ways. Now I have another question for you. Would you die for them? Would you willingly lay down your life for Antiochus Epiphanes or Hitler or Stalin? Please follow along as I read Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 9. God's word says, For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. In verse 6, the apostle Paul tells us that believers, himself included, were helpless to save themselves. And yet, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. He died for those that did not know him, did not love him, did not serve him, and did not fear him. Verse 7 shows the uncommon human example of someone giving up their life for another. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. It is an uncommon event when someone knowingly makes the ultimate sacrifice for another, when one willingly lays down their life for another person. And someone might be willing to do that for a relatively good person, friend, countryman, different examples. And in verse 8, speaking to believers, Paul says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In contrast to the uncommon event in verse 7, God loves the sinner and sent his son to die for them as an expression of the father's unconditional love towards believers. Christ died for sinners. Every sin is an infinite offense against a holy God and every sinner rightly deserves his eternal wrath. The sinner is an enemy of God and fighting against God. Who dies for an enemy? Who dies for the wicked? God does. God in Christ died for believers. Believers. 
There was nothing good about us. There was nothing lovely about us. There was nothing we'd done or could do to earn favor with God. There's nothing in us that would attract God's love. We're simply objects of God's unconditional love and mercy and grace. And verse 9 says, much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. Believers, having been justified, having been declared righteous by the blood of Christ shed at the cross, believers will be saved from the wrath of God. Looking towards the future, believers will not experience the final judgment, that final punishment for sin where the wrath of God is poured out forever in the lake of fire. Believers are saved from that experience through Christ. However, that salvation from the wrath of God is only applicable through Christ. It's only for those that know Christ for those that have turned from their sins to follow Christ. If you're here today and you would admit that you don't know Christ or that you don't follow Christ, then we would ask when the tray comes, when those elements come, that you just simply just let the the tray pass. This is a family time. This is a time for believers who have been purchased, who have been justified by Christ to celebrate and proclaim those truths. But... I want you to consider that you are a sinner and your sin will be punished. And without Christ, that means that you will experience the lake of fire forever. But please don't leave today without talking to me or one of the other pastors or the person who brought you. We would love to talk to you about trusting in Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Believer, this passage tells us that we were helpless, ungodly, Sinners enslaved to sin. How is it that Christ died for us? How is it that we're recipients of God's unconditional love? How is it that we get to spend eternity with him? Consider those things. And when your hearts are prepared, please take communion on your own.